Good morning, good morning. It is Maggie Rose Cunningham here, your host for Middle Earth Readings this week starting October the 24th. We, like many areas in the UK, had a huge storm last night. I know that others have had them through the course of the last few days. Literally had water come in through the ceiling in this room last night. And I had my, my family over, so we were having dinner, we were having a big family dinner, and I had lit loads of candles, and we had a power cut. And we were sitting in this, in this storm with the lightning coming down, and the rain was thundering down, and the candles were all lit. And I was thinking to myself, you know, sometimes we choose to become the storm, you know, to, to walk out in to the elements and sometimes we choose to sit in our cozy homes with our candles lit and both are our options as long as we're with the storm in some way you know the the tragedy of when something amazing is happening outside you know that nature is arrayed out for us in all of her splendor and we're busy on our little phones that's the thing i'm present to today become the eye of the storm took on a new meaning for me in in that moment last night I was thinking it's not just about recognizing that we are part of nature and responding to it but we are the the conscious receiving part of nature you know, receiving that wonder so be the eye um, which also explains why I'm a little bit late starting today because my internet connection is still slightly wobbly one of our routers is still not working proper um, properly so I can see that people are arriving in the chat hello everybody if there's any issues I hope there won't be but you know please do bear with me I'm hoping we won't have to restart or, or reschedule and we'll be able to get through today I'm slightly chilly because I've had to open the, the doors to let um, the, the the other router from elsewhere in the house speak over here to, to my study my study that had its flood going on now before we start looking at the planetary movements, and I can see hello to everybody who has shared their weekly rune, that is lovely to see. We've got Esther, Patricia, we've got Lisa, Suzanne, Felicity, I think I saw Carolyn a minute ago as well. Mm. Ah, yes, I can see that Suzanne, you've bought, um, you've bought some people's runes with you, so that is wonderful. So we will come to your runes and we'll look at the planetary movements, but the first thing I wanted to do is to say I'm very, very excited very excited and I'm not going to tell you what I'm excited about yet but what I would like you to do is to get out your diary and save in your diary three dates the 9th the 16th and the 23rd of December they are all Fridays and it's eight o'clock for about an hour and a half is what we're looking at uh, so pop those into your diary keep them safe and free and the other one is the 2nd of January for some new year fun and that's at 7 30 again p.m and all of those are London times so I'm not going to tell you anything more all will be revealed but as I say 9th 16th and 23rd they are Fridays and the, the 2nd of January is a Monday I want to say don't quote me on that but it's the 2nd of January not the 1st I think it's a Monday, I want to say, I'm fairly certain it's a Monday. So pop them in your diary and more will be revealed. Um, okay, so let's see our planetary movements for this coming week. So I just wanted to bring a little bit of presence to um, yesterday, covered this last week, but um, Odin's Hall, we're now in Odin's Hall, um, Gladsheim. So we, we move, it's the equivalent of Scorpio. So if you're a Scorpio baby, then um, Odin's Hall, Gladsheim is your hall. The, the halls were brought about by um, Freya Aswin. She is, uh, they come from her work, you know, when, where we place the halls. And Gladsheim is known as Bright Home. It is said to have 13 seats where the gods come together. I love that it's 13 and not 12. Um, you know, it's the Olympians, it's 12, so 13, a bit of a magic number there. And what I'm really aware of is that, you know, I've been talking about becoming the eye of the storm. And Odin is stirring. As we start to move into, we started to finish up with the with the first eight, the first eight of the runes, which eight means family, but it also happens to be eight runes, so it's useful way to remember it. And we're moving into the storm runes, coming with, us, the, with the movement of Suna's chariot. 
but um, Frick's chariot and Odin's chariot also follow you know, swiftly behind. They're often very close to where the sun is. So we've got this storm energy rising through the um, the month when we're in Gladsheim in Odin's hall. And so Odin is providing us this glimpse of his two faces. Obviously, he has many more than two, but there's sort of two major aspects of him. The, the All-Father enthroned, watching out for all of the worlds, keeping you know, everything ordered and creating this space where he draws in the warriors. You know, they come to Valhalla, which is within Gladsheim. You know, they come there and, um, and he assembles, he brings people together. And he's in his All-Father mode then. But he is also the Wanderer and the Lord of the Wild Hunt and the Storm itself and the ecstasy and the wildness. And you might see it as being, you know, he's in his hall and he gathers everybody in and then he goes out. And I sometimes think of it as almost like he is the creator of heroes. You know, through these, these moments of the storm, he says, stand, stand in the storm. You know, stand and be counted make your difference make your mark and then i will be there and i will gather i will gather you in so i want to give a bit of presence to that today uh so it's the 24th today so tomorrow we have the new moon and the new moon is in uh, north is so i said that the storm rooms are coming up so you might think of the storm rooms as being um Hargalaz here which we will be talking about momentarily uh yes we will be that's coming up later so Hargalaz is the first room in the second eight, which you might think of it as being like the tempestuous eight, the testing, the challenging, the defining, that moment when your beautiful child turns into a teenager. And it's a natural thing that they need that separation. They need that separation and to journey out on their own. But biologically, a lot of um, animals are, are programmed to then leave the pack at that point to find their own way. And Hargalaz is that happening, which is why Vunyo is the last room in the first eight. Um, kin, joy, family, togetherness, belonging, woohoo, everything's brilliant. But then it has to change. The wheel always has to turn, and Hargalaz says the wheel has to turn. The next thing has to come. So immediately after Hargalaz, we have North is the rune of necessity, of desire, of the need fire. It can feel very uncomfortable because it says there's something a bit wrong here. I often associate it with the hormone cascade. You know, uh, in whatever phase of life you are in, this feeling of just insight, it's like an internal storm, almost like Hargaz is external happening to us. North, this is the storm inside saying, no, this is the wrong, this is wrong, go that way. Now, when we follow North, this, when we follow its signals and its cues and it's, we follow our desires and we allow ourselves to move and change and to follow the signals inside, then it's a very positive, beneficial rune helping us to support our own needs and honour ourselves and the necessity of our, of our beings. You know, why am I here? My purpose you know, it calls us into purpose, but it can be uncomfortable at the time. So we have a new moon in North East, which is bringing this big whooshing current of North East energy that's going to be continuing to culminate um, in November. So this is sort of a precursor here to some really strong North is energy coming with Suna's chariot and Odin's chariot and Frigg's chariot. They're all hanging out there. So Manny, he's like, he's warning us. He's saying, okay, now is a good time to be noticing if there's anything that you are not doing for yourself, any of your needs that you are not getting fulfilled and to make some commitments to changing that. Now, I'm very aware that in the last couple of weeks, um, I haven't been tending to my needs as rigorously as I normally do. I let the sugar monster take over just a little bit and I'm okay with that because there was reasons for that at the time. But the new moon says, is this the way you want to be all the time? And I'm like, no, this is not the way I want to be all the time. So it's a good time for making those new commitments to yourself to um, follow your own needs so that when this big rush of North is energy comes in, you can ride it rather than feeling the uncomfortableness of North is. Because sometimes we just do feel the uncomfortableness of North is. I'm going to be honest, but welcome it in. Know that it is there to support you in a deeper connection with yourself um, in the long run. Now, also on the 25th, on the same day as the new moon, Odin enters Wunyo. 
so I've said, you know, we've got Sunath Chariot and Runyo at the moment, but it's really lovely. So there's a celebratory energy almost. The sun is still there. Suna, she's there in Runyo. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's going to be there until n next week. And Odin's Chariot is in Runyo. And so he is calling, so he is saying, um, uh, celebrate. He's almost saying, you know, honouring your needs shouldn't be something that's difficult. You know, it can be tricky at first when we are, when we've been honouring our desires a bit more than our needs can be hard to draw back from that but you know celebrate that celebrate the small joys celebrate when you can light your candles because you've got a power cut and I'm not sure how I'm celebrating water coming through the roof but it could have been worse <laughs> it's looking for those small small joys I'm really feeling back into my my huga at the moment and bringing some real intentionality to that for those of you who are not sure about Huga, you can look in the guide section in the hearth space and there's some pieces on Huga for you so you can have a look at that that joy you know i sat down and i did some knitting last night i said oh i could do a bit of work no it is sunday and i'm going to do some knitting instead so odin is saying you know take this moment heroes warriors People who are following their purpose are doing great work, are just as deserving of rest and play and belonging and delight and fulfillment than anybody else. I was about to say, if not more so, but that would be wrong, wouldn't it? Um, certainly just as deserving. Take that time because that fills you up. It fills you up with the energy so that when you do come across the north is dark night of the soul or the storm of Hargalas, you have that light inside you. You have tended to that flame inside you. You have read beautiful poetry. You've sat down with your knitting. You've lit candles. You've walked in the storm. You've tended to your garden. You know, you've, you've done all of those things that, that fill you up, that give you the energy and the momentum to be able to do the stuff that we want to do and gives us joy in a different way, but, but can be draining for us too. So Odin gives us full permission to do this work. And then on the 29th, at the end of the week, we have Frigg's chariot is entering Hargalas. So Frigg, you know, she is all about the, uh, the hall and the hearth and the tending of the space and the realm. But even, you know, she brings this, this storm energy and she says that when we fear loss, we fear love. And I think that what she's really bringing at this point is, you know, the world is a mad, mad, place now every every week i'm sure that at the moment that every week another piece of news comes out and i think well that's the maddest it can get surely we're moving in an upward spiral now oh no it can get madder it can you know and it can feel really hard you know, like, i'm trying really hard to live my purpose in the world and what is going on <laughs> you know and you are all doing the same you're you know we're trying our best here and yet the world is mad and what Frigg is really bringing home to me is she's saying that you know, just because the odds seem impossible, just because the world might seem difficult, just because the storm is raging out there, doesn't mean we shouldn't try. It doesn't mean that your light isn't powerful. It doesn't make you any less than you were yesterday. It doesn't make your courage less. It doesn't, it doesn't diminish you. And she was really speaking to me about the role of faith at this point. Where do you find faith? And it's very similar to Odin in some ways, bringing us that um, the Runyo in for, for him and saying, you know, permission to find joy. Frigg is saying, permission to be your true magnificent self. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> permission to hope. Permission to be optimistic. Permission to stand up and say, I'm still going to do my thing. I'm still going to do it. And I'm going to continue to have the faith that my actions matter. And I, it's one of the reasons why I love working with you, you know, saying, I know that our actions matter. So Frigg is bringing, bringing that. She is saying, you know, don't, don't give up. Don't give in to the face of the mad, mad world be the bit that makes sense you know that's all we can do ah so on that note let's try being the bit that makes sense and looking at the roots that everyone has brought today so erica you have got um algis as has marie's you've come in a pair together here 
So we have got the lovely Algis rune. Nice, um, I'm feeling that connection to between the Wunyo rune and the Algis rune. They're both runes of, of light, which can be deceptive because we can think of them as being um, weaker in their energy, but that is not the case at all. They have you know, incredible power, both of them, but they do have the, the power of, of light is within both of them. I'm just looking for my Algis rune here. So here we've got the Algis rune for um, Erica and for Marie. I'm really feeling that energy of the Rainbow Bridge. Um, perhaps let me just feel into you, Erica, for a minute and then we'll see what else comes for Marie. The Rainbow Bridge, the, the different nuances of light there. There is a moving through the different parts of the spectrum, is what I feel. And a, I'm always seeing it as, you know, you move into the red and you breathe that in and then you move into the orange and you breathe that in. This is something that um, that I do when I work with people on um, past life regression or sometimes we use this to, as, a, as a bridge and to go to the well of weird as well, is moving through the colors of the rainbow, but really breathing in the power that the bridge has to offer you. And I think it's saying, because you are a bridge, allow this, the bridge of the gods to empower you so some some work with rainbow energy is what I, i'm feeling there for you erica whereas marie I'm, st I'm definitely feeling that still but there's an earthing to that there's a groundedness to that i'm still feeling the, the bifrost bridge within this almost like a drawing down of the beauty of the colors of the rainbow and then expressing them around you so I would see this as being, and I was talking about being Hugo and bringing joy and doing all of those things. It is saying, in what way can you make that feeling of, of joyfulness that is unique to you, in unique expressions of your joy, how you feel that? How can you bring that even more fully into your environment? It might be the little bit of um, half tending could be helpful here. Literally, you know, I know it can, it can sound frivolous, but I don't think it is when we think about our spaces, you know, the, the creating our spaces is sacred. And it might be a question of looking at, you know, a painting that you've got on your wall and re-energizing the relationship with it or saying, actually, you know, I need to move this now to bring the energy of the divine more fully into your physical space is the sense that I'm getting there for you, Marie. And Esther, you have a thala for the week. So this is, um, again, there's an, an earthiness to it. So the Algus rune has moved us, transitioned us into Esther's rune with the Athala rune of estate, of ancestry, of inheritance, of legacy. Here we are with the Athala rune. And Esther, I'm feeling for you, there is this sense of, um, there's a, a sovereignty piece here which sometimes comes up with the Manaz rune, but it is there within the Athala rune. You can almost see this as being like a, a throne with the legs of the throne and, um, and this would then become the seat. A sense of stillness that I'm getting. Whereas Manaz, when we get the personal sovereignty in Manaz, is often about standing in your power and then proclaiming that um, outwards into the world. This Athala rune is saying something along, something about, you know, that I am enough. I am enough. Sometimes Odin will go up to his, um, to Hjalaskalf, the high seat, great throne, and look out over the world and survey them in a manner sense. Sometimes he goes to sit on the seat to look inwards, to connect. He asks me the question, um, who is my father? And I think he's talking about his his father, I think about um, Bor and Vesta and uh, the, the primal giants who birthed Odin and is almost saying um, they have a status in their own right that's not just about like being my uh, parents, you know, that's what we think remember is like oh, oh, Odin, he's the important one and then every, the family tree sort of spokes off from him. And there is something about, if you were to take the Athala rune and then you just drew another diamond under there and another one under there and another one under there and another one under there, all of these different pieces would connect. And um, that's what I'm thinking, feeling for you is perhaps just some meditative work on, on that, that um, there's nothing that I need to do or fix or change in order to claim the throne that is mine as my 
mother and father did before me and their mother and father did before them and their mother and father did before them and as those who I have influenced in my life who I have um, touched in some way in their lives will become those who who do that after me there is a peace in this a sense that although you know I talk a lot about stand up to claim your space within the chain of the ancestors there is also almost a sense in which that is inevitable just through the act of being born and being and there is a claiming of sovereignty there, I think a claiming of sovereign power there that doesn't come about because of purpose or deservingness or anything that we have done, but simply through the act of being, which the Athala room is um, inviting you into there, Esther. Patricia, you have got Yarrow, which is again another earthy rune, a very different energy to Athala. It brings um, that sense of connectedness in a different way. So it's connection to the land and to the seasons it's Yera means year, our word year comes from Yera, and it has the two halves of the rune circling about each other. Let me see if I can find them. Oh, where are you, Yera? Here we go. Here's the Yera rune. So it's the only rune that has two parts of it that aren't touching, but you can feel the almost like this gravitational force holding them together and it's reminding me in actually of what I was talking about at the beginning about Frigg saying that act of stepping into faith and there is a sense of in which you know, time inevitably turns things inevitably change sometimes we can think about it as being like the wheel of fortune you know, um, that fortune can go up and, and go down I'm not sure if that's so much a northern tradition idea this because there is a sense in which we have um, influence and agency within that but sometimes that that leaning into the wheel can be really helpful for us I remember um, whenever I used to have to do like a, a job interview or a presentation that I really wasn't looking forward to I would just say to myself you know whatever happens whatever happens it will be over by five o'clock you know Maggie at five o'clock will have completed this that is inevitable you know even if I don't show up to the interview I still would have completed it I always did to show up to the interviews you know, I still would have completed it and sometimes there is a peace in that so the real Yera energy really saying you know this too shall pass so when we are in times where we struggle it's that sense of recognizing that the invisible laws of the universe still have our backs they're still holding us this too will pass and the only thing that we can do, therefore, is to do our best in the moment. And this too will pass. And all will be well, is what the Yarrow Room is, is offering there. It's, there is a, sometimes that can feel very intangible, and Yarrow is a very tangible room. You know, so it's thinking about it in that way, very, you know, the, the course of time. Things like uh, grief, you know can feel as if it will never end, I will never ever come out of this. And yet, time heals us and rebuilds us. So um, I think that might also be, Patricia, maybe it may be for you, but it may also be something that's worth recognizing that you have like wisdom to offer others in this regard too. Lisa, you have Kinas, which is um, one half of the Yara rune in its shape. Yera is a rune of manifestation in the big sense of, you know, the wheel of time, the earth turning on its axis, the, the slow and steady uh, change and the way in which the seasons turn. Kinas is the rune of, of, of transformation, of um, tangible transformation, of knowledge turning into action, of an idea turning into uh, you know, a, a painting that you've created or a book that you have written or something tangible of the body changing. You know, it's things like, what will I wear today? And then you choose and then you create your outfit. You know, it might be the same thing as you wore yesterday or it might be something entirely different, but it's still that, that action there. Whew. And what is Kina's offering there for? It's, um, I'm feeling like the eyes, it's that sense of keenness, and literally like keen, you know, keen as, um, that sort of keenness of vision and the ability to discern. 
it's playing with the idea of like the precision of vision and I'm thinking about birds here this is what's coming to my mind all the different birds you know how owls can swivel their heads and they have the, the big eyes and they bring in a lot of the light it's this honing to the environment that's coming through for me and you know the hawk or the falcon who sort of sees the tiny tiny movement and then goes you know, straight in there that all of these different ways in which the the eye the seeing eye has been honed and tuned to this a specific specificity of function or environment and i think there is something here about claiming that for you lisa of um whether it's in your work or at home recognizing that you are a well honed um like tool the the the, the, the precision with which you are able to make decisions that you are able to read your environment is is borne out by years and years of practice and experience plus natural talent that is what's coming through so it's a quite a specific like recognition of power and recognizing that the way in which you perceive the world is by design so i think there's some claiming of gifts there whether these are things that you have over time honed and almost like recognizing that and owning that and perhaps things that have just naturally come to you and it doesn't make them any less valuable just because they've naturally come to you. And I was wondering whether Kienaus was going to say and, and bring that into manifestation in some way, honour that in some way. Not, I'm not seeing anything visual, but maybe some journaling on this question, some actual writing down around this question of saying, um, how is the way that I see the world a gift that is uniquely mine? How has the way that I see the world benefited those around me or my in environment is, is the question that's being asked there. And I almost wonder whether there might be some other insights that come through that process. The key Nazarene feels as if it's laughing at me a little bit, it's sort of giggling a little bit here. Uh, there is an act of creativity, I think, that's being called forth, but it's not going to tell me what it is. It's saying, you know, look, you look, Lisa, it's saying, because you are the one who has that um, the eyes that are needed for this particular task. Suzanne, you have Athala. So we've covered Athala with Esther. <sighs> with you, I'm feeling actually, as I'm, I'm feeling more in the belly here with your Athala rune. So with Esther, I was feeling the um, the throne. But there's a sense of like a wide hillside. Apologies, I'm yawning. Hmm. Maybe I'm just relaxing there into this wide hillside. This really wide, open hillside. And I'm seeing um, ancient pathways that perhaps might have been forgotten and are no longer trodden. Pieces of clay and pottery and jewellery in the, in the earth itself. And I'm, it's almost like an, an archaeology of some description, a reading of the energies of the land and a recognition of um, inheritance. Uh, perhaps this is why you've come on from Lisa, because we were talking about recognising gifts. And I know that, um, I know that for you, Suzanne, because I know you very well, that um, crystals and rocks, that type of work, that, you know, that they speak to you. But I'm feeling this whispering of, human-made um, trackways and, and natural objects, so things that have been made out of the substances that speak to you anyway. There's like a, a calling there to connect in that way with, with the land and to feel the tracings of the ancestors within the land and within sacred objects. I'm literally sort of seeing you like holding like flint um, arrow tips piece of amber jewellery. Oh, it's very intriguing. Hmm. I'm just feeling into whether there's anything else for you in there or whether I'm going to have to leave you with this picture and see where you take it or where you play with it. I, I think that maybe there is a sense in which these objects could connect you even more strongly to ancestral wisdom, perhaps through this time period as well. Um, 
yeah i'm going to i'm going to leave you with that as we sort of start to move into the winter months and the time when the veils between the worlds are thinner and our connections to the ancestors are stronger it's just saying use the power of um of, of the objects that already speak to you to hear those voices more clearly uh, carol you have manners so we've talked about manners um, when we were talking about a thala I'm feeling quite a lot of power in the manners room. It's very um like black and white and red. I know you know see red, but what I'm feeling is a sort of black and white and red sort of gold in there as well. It's very clear, very focused. There's a sense in which others around you need that uh, the clarity at this point. Need you to like paint the picture as clearly as you possibly can. Perhaps I'm picking up a little bit on Suzanne's um piece at this point. What I'm seeing is almost like the, a parchment, big um, parchment with sort of illuminated, and it's this huge like, manas room illuminated with um, ravens and um, berries, like red berries and leaves drawn in black and white upon it, and sort of gold and filigree through it. And it's the way in which this act of spending time on creating this 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 parchment signifies its power you know this is it has power because it has had time and, and, and money presumably spent on its creation and it's looking at the way in which you can use that type of communication strategy to offer um, like care and attention to say this is important um, and the way I'm presenting it demonstrates to you how important it is um, I'm literally thinking about things like you know, if you've ever done a um, one of those like family rules things where you, you all sit down and you agree on the rules together and then you create them and you put them on the fridge and it's the difference between scribbling them down on a post-it note and making a, like a framed um, document that's, that time and care has been spent on. So it's, um, it's picking up a little bit on the Kina's energy that we've already had, the Athala energy that we've already had. And it's saying, how can you step into sovereignty more fully through these types of um, signals of, within the environment as to what is important, what is less important, what is deserving of time and energy and care? It's that type of excising of, um, of sovereignty, which is what is coming through um, to me. So if there's something that's important to you, how can you visibly demonstrate that? Is, is what's coming through. So I will leave that with, with you there, Carolyn. Let's see, Ren has manners as well. On side, facing right. Hmm. I suppose it depends on which bit is um, facing right. I'm gonna work on the assumption that it's this bit that's facing right. Oh, hmm. So as I'm looking at it for you, Ren, I am seeing a Dargaz rune. So the um, Dargaz rune would be this bit there, normally, but obviously it's on its side. And, um, and it's like it's sliding down this trackway. <sighs> Ooh. So the dark as when it comes like this to me always looks like a, like a sand timer, like the sand running through. And um, I, it feels to me in a very roundabout way, but I think we're getting there, as if there is a clash between what I always think of as being like divine timing and clock timing. It's like these grooves here, the grooves that are formed, are, that are pushing this little file of this little timer along, this little sand timer along. And it's like the timer is going this way, it's going this way, I'm running out of time, I'm running out of time, I'm running out of time, but I still need the sand to trickle down. And it's that sense of how are these two timelines going to work together? So it might be that you've got um, deadlines coming up or that you have control of some aspects but somebody else has control of other aspects and you're like oh how is it all going to work and um, because it's the manners rune on its side the the solution to this would normally be to step into sovereignty here and to decide right I'm going to have a conversation and I'm going to say first of all to myself what are the actual issues here is it that there are aspects that I don't, I'm not in my control? And if so, if they were in my control, what would be different? Is it just, I don't like deadlines and it's it's coming up for me um, or the year feels as if it's going really fast and I don't like that. Is it an emotion that I might need to 
um, get some support to dig into and go, is there something back in my past that is causing this this worry or concern that things are going... It's not even that things are necessarily going too fast. It's just that it doesn't feel like they're connecting is the sense that I'm getting. It's not going too fast anymore. Something feels wrong in some way and I'm not really sure. So the first thing to do is to name that and this is where you know if you struggle with those sorts of things working with a, with a coach or somebody who can help you to do this is advisable um, and then communicating that out whether it is you know depending on who the partners are in the in the scenario communicating your needs saying, okay I'm worried about this what can we do to resolve that I'm really feeling sort of tension in my teeth feeling it's like let's get rid of that let's get rid of that feeling stepping into sovereignty what am I worried about? What does my sovereign self st- say is uncomfortable for me in this situation? And then what are the conversations or actions that I need to take in order to feel powerful in this situation is what I'm uh, what I'm feeling there. So I hope that that is helpful for you, Ren. Candice has Thurisaz as its murk stage. Ooh, so I'm not sure um, which way it's murky. So we'll have a little look at it and see what comes. Thurisaz, the rune of the thorn, the rune of the giant. It's often seen as a very aggressive rune, as an aggressive defense or attack. But it's also the rune of, um, there's the Thurisaz rune here, passion and the heart. Very associated with Thor and his great hammer you know, that, that protects. So it's all about the way in which we manage this Thurisaz energy. When we um, hold the thorough as energy inside us and we do not give it freedom of expression because we're worried that it's too powerful that other people will um, think that you know, oh they're a bit much you know we hold it inside ourselves and it can become um, illness it can become stress it can lead to you know, the tension in the draw or jaw or worse um, over time so it's all about finding the ways in which we can express our power out in the world in a way that feels um, filled with integrity that feels right otherwise the thorough says energy gets trapped inside our systems and then it can become um, aggressive towards us so there's a I would recommend Candice if you haven't done it before read my story on the website so if you go to www.maginrose.com you can read Maggie's story and that gives a little bit more because I had a very intense relationship with the Thurisaz for a long period of time. And and start to look at how can I express that. Um, it might not even be anger, just to be really, really clear. It can be anything that is holding back your, your I think it's almost like your wild self, the person you were intended to be. You know, how can that be expressed? And if that's not happening, it might be that you would then want to work with some um, healing to release um, energy as I'm speaking I'm actually feeling like in my hands I'm needing to get rid of that what sort of um, rituals and practices can you bring in in order to do that and uh, anything that you can then do to say right how can I express this more fully how can I dig deeper into that fierce wild self and start to allow space for that to come through is what's coming through there um just as a note for anybody where you know I give a, a, a reading like that and it's a bit like oh you know for some people they're like oh yes I know what to do and that's fine for other people no I'm not sure what to do I might need some support with that you can book a North Star session with me again on the Mag and Rose website and they're quite long and they're deliberately long sessions so that we can move through um, healing blocks and come out with a plan at the other end so that's always available if you feel like I need a little bit of help with this um, that's not just for you there, Candice, it's not saying um, you, you must have one, but if there's something that you go, wow, actually I can do, I could really do with some clearing and some help around this, this is indicated something big for me, there is support available. Felicity, you have Kinas, so we have looked at Kinas, we were looking at Lisa with the eye, weren't we, around Kinas? We were talking about um, birds and the way in which their, how their vision is different and this one is coming, bringing a different kind of vision to me. This is about beauty. It's about um, 
embracing the unique way in which we each see the world. Now, I read a book one day, and some, somebody else is more of an ornithologist than I am. You can tell me whether this is true or not, but I want it to be true. It was a book that I had about um, bird law, and it said that members of the corvus family, so crows and ravens and magpies, don't see each other as, um, as black, or magpies black and white. They see this um, iridescent colour that isn't visible to the human eye, but is visible to them really really want it to be true but it is this idea that we think that everybody else sees things in the same way as us and that if we see you know like intense beauty in something and everyone else says well that's you know they're, they're wrong oh my lord that there's something wrong with us whereas actually that's not the case part of the gift of you know being born you know human corvus whatever it is is the distinctiveness of our lived experience and I think that's what the Kina is room is asking me to do. It is saying, spend a little time recognising the way I have chosen to manifest uniquely within you. How you see the world. I just spend some time like, gazing at a, a plant. I've got a little um, money plant that a friend of mine has given to me. And I'm just looking at it now and going, it might be, you don't know, but it might be that no one else in the world sees this plant the same way as you if they were given the opportunity. Obviously, no one is seeing the plant the same way that I am at the moment. I'm the only person witnessing the magnificent beauty of, beauty of this plant and taking the time to do it, and that is part of my unique perceiving. But there are, you know, there are other ways. I don't know what shades of green people see. I don't know whether they see the glossiness. You know, I, I don't know if they see, you know, the sense of life force coming around the, around the plant as they're looking at it, whether it invites them in. You know, all of these things that we each see in a very unique and different way. I was inviting you to play with that um, today, Felicity. Oh, this week, Felicity. Elaine, you have Perthro. My internet is down um, here as well. Oh, well, yeah, I think that's, I suppose that just with big storms and everything at the moment, it's um, it's liable to happen, isn't it? Uh, luckily, our power cut wasn't for very long, so we got the fun bit and not the, we're sitting here in silence now and darkness and the teenagers bit, which is nice. So the Perthro rune, I think we, I was talking um, last week, I think that the Perthro rune is one of the runes that it's less easy to see its modern English equivalent, which is P. And we can't really see a P in this one, can we? And no, no matter how hard I try, I'm not going to be able to see a P in this one. But the Perthro rune, you know, the word play is coming through very strongly with the with the Perthro rune here. It is the rune of, of weird, of fate, of the flow, of magic. And it's again connecting you with that Runyo energy that I was talking about, about um, Gladsheim and Odin inviting us into play. Um, well, he was inviting us into sort of joy and belonging, wasn't he? For me, it was knitting. For you, there is a, um, almost like the mischievousness of, of fate. <sighs> Opening to opportunity, serendipity, um, enterprise. If things are offered to you um, this morning, then this morning this week see what might be there look for the look for the unexpected in the world around you look for the hand of the Nornir in the world um, around you there is a rippling laughter as I, I was saying with the keen as doing that it was laughing the rooms are definitely like they're having fun this morning I think maybe it's like after a storm the energies are released a little bit more and we get to have a bit more um, frivolity that's coming through. It's very silvery, um, ethereal energy that's coming through as well. I think perhaps it's also saying, recognising that quality in, in yourself, that um, effervescent lightness that opens other people up when they're with you to opportunity and serendipity and luck and fun and play and recognising that as a gift. And Perthra is saying, do more of that. Do more of that. Be a channel for me, is, is what it's offering there. Suzanne is saying, love Odin giving us permission to knit. Wunyo, indeed. Karen, uh, good evening for you in Australia. And you have Ingus. So here we've got Ingus. Um, it can also sometimes be a little a bit like the Athala rune. It can have a Kina's rune on either end of it so um, this is one of its versions it doesn't matter which one you use so the Ingu's rune the rune of the seed the rune of um, gestation of potential just waiting beneath the surface Ooh. 
it feels very new to me. There's something really um, new coming through for me, Karen. I think if I feel into your Ingu's rune. Sometimes it feels as if um, the Ingu's rune seeds can wait under the ground for the longest of times to be uh, to be born, to be in potential. I think it's suggesting that perhaps like a wish or an opportunity that you put out there in the past is ready to come through and maybe sooner than you had anticipated. So it's saying get ready for that, look for that. Interesting that it's come just after Perforos. We've got that serendipity and that opportunity energy is there. And the Ingo's room, it's sort of, um, if you get those seeds that are right on the very surface and the, the rain comes at just the right moment and the sun comes down at just the right moment and all of the things align and then it bursts forth with opportunity almost quicker than we had anticipated. So I would just maybe partially you could have a look and you can say what are the things that I put out there into the universe over the last, oh, is it even suggesting like maybe two years that you put out there and you said I really wanted to do that, maybe even longer than that. Um, and look out for those and when those moments come you know I'm reminded that I, I had a, a moment where I put something out in the world like two it was two years ago actually um, maybe two and a half I put something out there and said you know I, I want to do this and I was taking slow baby steps towards it and then suddenly someone just said would you do this and it was literally like you know something that I thought was going to be coming in another year or two's time was in an hour and a half and I was like Yes, <laughs> I was just like, I have an hour and a half to prepare. It'll be absolutely fine. I put this out on my universal um, vision board. No, it was there and it's happening. So I'm going to do it and it was fine. It was really, really fine. But sometimes when something comes up so quickly, it's unexpected to think, I'm not ready. You are ready to seize the moment. That's what it is saying. Let me see what else we have got. Um, okay, so Kaylee, so you have got Gar. So um, Gar is, in, is not in the Elder Futhark. It's one of the um, Anglo-Saxon runes, I want to say. So I don't do um, readings with those runes because I won't be able to offer you the level of insight um, I, because I work within the, the Elder Futhark. It's just energetically, I'm not gonna be able to do that one for you. I'm so sorry. If anybody else, I know we do have a couple of Anglo-Saxon rune readers in the hearth space. So pop your rune into the hearth space and say, would anybody like to give me some insights on, on the Gar rune? And I'm sure somebody will do a reading for you. So I'm sorry about that, but it's that Elder Futhark is what I use for Middle Earth readings. It's because, um, well, partially because I've always worked with them, but partially as well because I do the, the runic astrology work is all done with the Elder Futhark, with the 24 runes of the Elder Futhark, um, not with the others. So my apologies for that, Kayleen. Um, Erica, I love the Algis Rainbow Bridge and allow the Bridge of the Gods to empower me. Yes, good. Carolyn, you have got Gibo for this week. Oh, you are here, Carolyn. There. So um, I, I said hello to you earlier, and um, and then I was like, oh, I'm not sure if she's here, but you are here. So here we go. Here's the Gibo rune, the rune of the gift, the rune of exchange. Now, what I'm feeling into here, partially because we've just had the Ingu's rune, and we've been talking about um, wishes that are sown in the past, and then they come through, and we go, oh, I'm not ready for that one. No, is there's um, a Gibo can hold a very similar energy because it is about um, commitments and promises that have been made. There's a sense of um, calling in things that are due to you at this point. We can be very nervous about doing that. We can feel like, oh, you know, this person said, uh, you know, I did this thing for somebody else, and um, mm, you know, I would really like it if they, I, I asked. If they did something for me now but you know they'll do it if they want to I'm not gonna actually ask for it and there is a sense of um, Gibo saying just check your check where those uh, energetic ties are and open to the possibility that calling that back in that energy back in is a, is a good thing a good thing for you and a good thing for the other person it's also bringing some awareness to that as well. Gibo is a Gibo is an interesting rune because it is very much about the gift, but it does also talk about like the laws. I always think about these as being like codified laws and rules and regulations, which can feel quite challenging for those of us who like like freedom and 
oh yeah I'll go wherever it, I'll go wherever the energy sends me we're like a bit of that Ewaz um, energy of the steed and the partner and we're instinctive and intuitive and we're doing this and doing that and Gibo says um, oh but uh, your balance sheet says that this person owes you three pounds and 33 pence and that is a you know an, an energetic imbalance which we should sort out now and um, I look at me like oh you know I'll just leave it it's fine I'm, e I'm not even getting here a sense in which you could say actually I want to go and intentionally just cut off some of these um, old connections so that I can be free there is a sense of, for me in which sometimes the only way that we can move into freedom is to allow a a promise or an oath or a, like a rebalancing to occur that it's not enough to just say I and I release this I'm the only reason I'm pausing is because I can feel something else something else within this Carolyn that I'm trying to articulate and I'm not sure if I'm articulating it as powerfully as it deserves Yeah, so I think that um, in Iceland they talked about four um, spirits who guarded Iceland and they kept it safe and secure. And we don't know much about how those came into being or what how they were honoured or the thanks that was given to them. But that is an important part of Northern tradition uh, practice is this sense of gift giving and exchange that, it, that that needs to be honored in some way so i think what the Gibo room is suggesting is a recognition that when we enter into contracts we are entering into a process of giving and receiving so just as those four land guardians came and they said we will stand and we will guard the land and that's our gifting they expected um, offerings in exchange from 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 the people and we we do that we, when we t when we tend to our hearths if we if you have a uh, hearth guardians it might be a question of offer off giving offerings to them and but also saying what is it that I want to receive in exchange for that as well and being explicit about that so you know we, we will a lot of people will do they'll put out you know the, the, the milk or the honey or whatever it is for their um their, their guard their garden spirits and their hearth spirits and things like that but it's, there's a naming at the same time of saying I am offering this to you and what I would like in return is, is this is a cleaner exchange so it took a little bit of time to come to that and I'm sorry about that but I think it might be an important piece um, not just for you but for others as well um, just in terms of the way that we work with um, land spirits and hearth spirits um, but it isn't just offering to them because that leaves them going well, what does what do they want in exchange for this they've given me something but you know what and then they might try and give you stuff that you don't actually want you know so there's a being explicit about what you what you want in, in return right let me see where we are so Karen you've got Gibo Patricia says thank you when I'm in a situation I'm not sure about or do not like I also think this time tomorrow is a new day and it'll be over ah there you go so use that wisdom you know it already so use it um, Marie says, I'm loving the beautiful Angus energy. My happiness is palpable. Wonderful. Esther says, thank you. <laughs> Marie says, thank you. Always, I know you say thank you. Re Rebecca, you have got manners. Um, so we've done manners already once. I'm actually, because it's come up again and we've just talked about half spirits, I feel as if maybe that's something for you to feel into a little bit more, um, Rebecca, would be that sense of sovereignty in your half and... Hmm. Not necessarily. I think it's, it's almost a recognition of, of how long you have been in that position and that role and honouring the relationship that you have created with the spirits of your hearth and your place through doing that and recognising that once we, that we are almost woven into their story as well as them being woven into um, ours 
know that we aren't the only story keepers and the only story carriers. It might be fun to just think about um, what role do you play in the the soul stories of the spirits of your hearth? Um, yeah, what do they rely on, on you for? What do they come to honour you for? Uh, is part of the stepping into sovereignty and standing in sovereignty uh, piece there. So I'm going to add that to you there, Rebecca. We've already done um, Maz a little bit. Um, I think that's what wanted to come um, in more. Sally answers, I'm feeling I am coming towards, moving towards my purpose. I ask the rooms for guidance and I have answers. The voice, the utterance. And I think even saying those words in this group, I am feeling I am coming towards, moving towards my purpose. I ask the room for guidance is in itself an act of power of stepping into the Ansu's room. There is more and more with the Ansu's room. Here's Ansu's. This sense of moving out from receiving into giving outwards. Of sharing your words, of sharing your wisdom. It's that sense in which sometimes we the pursuit of purpose comes not from receiving it but from the act of pursuit itself of of trying sometimes failing of playing of taking a risk of putting yourself out there of being more visible of, of opening that side up a bit more of communicating it outwards and seeing how the universe responds to you seeing how others respond to you so that they can reflect back to you what they are seeing as well is what I'm sensing there is claiming the power of Ansu's, um, the power to communicate and then to receive more back from doing that is what I'm getting with that Sally Ann. So share, share your voice. Mm -mm -mm. Suzanne says, thank you. Kaylee says, I do read down this excellent, actually excellent, but I appreciate the other message this morning so much. Thank you for this message, my absolute pleasure. Chen says, um, if it's not too late, I've got North Ears. So Chen, with the North Ears, you are riding that tide of the North Ears rune coming through thick and fast at the moment. Um, I would use this new moon coming up tomorrow, really feel into the honouring of the needs, the, There's, a, there's an interwovenness, I'm feeling like. Sometimes we can become bound into either what other people think that we need or into getting our needs fulfilled by, or, or trying to get our needs fulfilled by filling the needs of others. You know, the need for approval, for example, means that we offer all of our energy to other people and we can sow a very strong um, thread within our own soul tapestry of of receiving a lot from that but sometimes that is fulfilling um, a desire a desire to be um, of service a desire to be liked a desire to be appreciated a desire to be valued so I think that what North is asking you at this point is to bring some real presence to if there was no one else around me at this point and I'm not saying you can't pick them up again later but if you were to just say okay I'm just moving everybody else out of the picture there and I was to have total and utter freedom to do whatever I wanted ever I wanted um, or even if you knew that whatever I did people would be like yes go Jen Jen is lying on the sofa relaxing go <laughs> what would become possible for you then what would you choose to do then and and giving yourself more space to that so it's not like right i'm going to give everything up so da, 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 i'm giving up i'm making a stand i'm going to spend the next two days in bed la, la, la. or you know, whatever it is that you want to do i'm going to go and <sighs> eat delicious cake in a bakery no, I'm projecting my own needs now, clearly. You can see that there's like bed and cake and probably candles and other such things for me. But, you know, if whatever you choose chose to do, the whole universe just responded with this massive 
affirmative wave of love and applause what would you choose to do then and then how can I make a little bit of extra time for that this week is starting to really honor the north is energy and providing a channel for it to flow through which will be important as the north is energy starts to build in the coming weeks carolyn says thank you very interesting how wonderful you took the time to fill into the message even deeper i'm well i'm glad that i did um i felt that it was important for for you but for others as well i take different impulses from what you said always so good to be here um, thank you so much for your work and time is going. Oh, thank you. That's very lovely of you, Karen. Thank you. And Sammy Ann says thank you as well. So I have reached the end. It looks like we have been fine with our um, internet all the way through, which is good. Just a reminder for those of you who weren't here at the beginning, dates for the diary, the 9th, the 16th and the 23rd of December. I have some special events coming up. Those are all Fridays at 8 o'clock London time and Monday the, Monday the 2nd of January at 7.30 p.m. Also, exciting new things will be unveiled very soon. So pop those in your diary now and keep them, keep those dates safe. Lovely to see you all. I will be, we'll be doing um, Half Hooger for our Inner Circle session this week. So we'll be uh, reviewing what we have received from Bragi. All of your recordings of the previous three Inner Circle classes that we have done on Sacred Utterance are on the website and are available there for you. So I look forward to seeing um, many of you at um, Half Hooger this week, which is on Thursday because it is half term. So I've moved my timetable a little bit so I can spend um, two days with the children this week. Uh, so I look forward to seeing many of you then. And if not, I will see you next Monday.